Okay. Uh, and the ridership has grown from January when this started with two trains to the end of June. Okay. Uh, and obviously they want more. Well, if there are no customers, it doesn't make sense. Right. But I, never, I think that they should they should trial over some period of time uh, rail service in the middle of the day, certainly during the tourism season, and see what happens. But if you're not you if you're only carrying three people uh, out to this part of the state on, on a train, it probably doesn't make sense. So if the, if the market isn't actually there for the rail service, then I don't think the state should keep it up. But they should determine whether or not it's there. Before before they decide not to offer. You're on record as being against state money for stem cell research, correct? No. No, then I'm incorrect. So tell me about your policy on stem cell research then. Uh, I support get, stem cell research. You do support stem cell, okay. Yeah. I read something incorrectly. Yeah. Uh, state money, what is your investment? What would you invest in stem cell research? That money's not there now, correct? Yeah, I, uh, well, I, I think there's several different layers of, of uh, policy on stem cell mm -hmm. research. I'm, I'm certainly not for restricting funds for st stem cell research, but mm -hmm. I don't think, I'm also not for necessarily promoting state spending for stem, stem cell research. You, know, you understand what I mean? No. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, no, there's, there are a lot of people who think that the federal government and state government should not fund any stem cell research. And, or, uh, yeah. there's some people who think there shouldn't be any stem cell research yeah. at all. Okay, And then there's a, a next level is that government shouldn't be paying for any stem cell research. Mm -hmm. And then there are others who think, yeah, but government should be promoting stem cell research. So I'm, I'm not somebody who's against stem cell. I totally support stem cell research. Okay. I, I think there are a lot of healthcare issues that may well get addressed mm -hmm. by Stem cell, stem cell research. So I think we should be looking into stem cell research. But the extent to which the government should be supporting it, I think, is a budgetary issue. You know, what can we afford, and uh, you know, how much should we be relying? The pharmaceutical industry comes up with new pharmaceuticals without government support. Um, we have the NIH, which helps with coming up with treatments for new diseases or diseases. Um, so I, I don't I don't I don't look at stem cell research as a as a special category. It's it's a it's it's an area where obviously I think there are, are is the opportunity with stem cell research to discover new treatments mm -hmm. for disease. But what whether the, whether the state or federal government should be supporting that over other other health research or supporting our needy in, in other ways. Mm -hmm. You don't see that as a possible economic driver, having that Connecticut be a, a leader in that, in which UConn started to become a leader in that, based on state funding, which went was, away. I think that was politically motivated, not ac not economically mo motivated. Not, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I think we should get politics out of stem cell research. If it makes sense economically for the state, great, and the state should support it in, in the same way it would support any other economic growth opportunity. Okay. Uh, but I don't. I, I mean, I think the federal government was was against stem cell research, and I think there were political interests in Connecticut to say, "Oh, we want to. We don't agree with that, so let's have Connecticut funding." But I think the politics on stem cell research are over. Let's look at it as an, is it really an economic opportunity, and and if it is, is it something that the government needs to support or should support? Or is it something the private sector will do on its own? In, in, in terms of supporting new initiatives, uh, talk about your energy policy. I took a look at your website. It's, it's somewhat vague. We should do things to encourage energy efficiency and develop sources of alternative energy. Does your budget or your policies include specific items or things in that to, to develop alternative energy? Well, we need to get energy costs down, both for we have, uh, I think, the highest energy cost in the continental U.S. I think Hawaii is higher than we are, but we're we're pushing 18 cents a kilowatt hour for most consumers, um, and that's two, three, four cents above our neighbors. We're we're in the Northeast United States, um, and so there's certain uh, aspects of our location, the sources of energy that are available to us, that that make us higher cost than other parts of the country for sure. But 
there are also things that the, 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 the government uh, is doing that drive the cost up, and there's some things that the government could do that bring the cost down. Um, I totally support, however, the um, direction of uh, uh, energy independence, so alternative sources of energy, any way we can figure out to, uh, ways to use less uh, imported oil, I think is good policy for the state. I think it uh, helps us in environmentally as well. So I support uh, that part of our energy policy. Um, if the uh, 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 renewable energy standard that we've set is too high, I know that when I was ambassador to Ireland, they set a very high um, renewable energy standard and, and they couldn't meet it. So they had to relook at it and revise it. Um, we, uh, I don't know if that's something that, that applies here in Connecticut or not, but energy policy is something that we need to look at annually is to make sure that what we're doing is taking us where we need to go. And where we need to go is toward cleaner energy, um, more energy efficiency, so we're consuming less energy, and less expensive energy. But are there specific programs that you would put in place or specific uh, investments that you would make, whether more for fuel cells or uh, tax credits for solar or something like that, would you put forth? Or is that something that's not part of your policy? I haven't right proposed now? anything yet. Okay. There are a lot of proposals uh, uh, out there. Um, I think uh, to help restore jobs to connect, we have to figure out a way to reduce energy costs as much as we can. I think mm -hmm. we need to at least get to regional parity rates. Mm -hmm. So our energy costs shouldn't be higher than Massachusetts, New York, Rhode Island. Um, and we need to figure out a way to, to get there. I, that's two or three cents a kilowatt hour. I think the government can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the rest of the policy, getting, getting away from, I mean, uh, the way our energy is is uh, generated here in Connecticut, for the foreseeable future, our marginal source of energy is going to be natural gas. So our cost of energy is going to uh, depend on what natural gas prices are. Uh, and to the extent that we can depend less on, on natural gas and generate more electricity within the state, uh, long term we can control, have better control over our energy costs. Uh, so I'd be a, be a proponent of that. But that's that has a long lead time. If we're talking about new uh, generation capacity in, in, uh, in Connecticut, you're talking at least five years, yeah. maybe more like ten. Yeah. But we should have a long-term plan. We don't. We don't really have a long-term policy. Yeah. Right. That's why I was yeah. trying to figure out yeah. if, so, where we were going with that. Would you consider uh, uh, adding tolls? No. Let me finish the question. Would you consider adding <laughs> tolls? No. On like 95? <laughs> no. Okay. So there's no, that that you consider that a unfair tax burden or extra burden on I, residents, it, even though those who were using the roads would be paying for it to improve the infrastructure? Listen, um, right now, I don't want the dialogue to get distracted in Hartford from reducing spending. We have to reduce the amount of money that our state government spends. And any time you talk about a potential new source of revenue, all of a sudden everybody in the legislature goes, oh, maybe we don't have to do this uh, difficult stuff, you know. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not entertaining any talk about any new revenues until we solve our spending problem. So Let me throw something at you then. I was at the COG meeting here <clears throat> yesterday, and Route 11. You're familiar with Route 11, the, the, our bridge to nowhere? Uh, that's been uh, ongoing for 20 years talking. The state simply does not have the money. Uh, they've abandoned the project. Uh, they, they say it's on the shelf, but they have abandoned the project completely. All the federal money was lined up, ready to go. The state couldn't come up with its share, so Route 11 goes nowhere. Local leaders here have put forth a, a proposal on the table of putting a toll on Route 11 with that money dedicated to paying the state share to finally get that road completed after 25 years. Would you consider something like that? Well, it sounds like that's a local decision, right? No. 
No. We have state. Yeah, again, state municipal road, right? municipalities have no power <laughs> to to uh, collect revenue other than property taxes. But that's the proposal that one of the proposals that local leaders have put on the table as a possibility of finally getting this project done after 25 years. Would well, why don't the local leaders put the toll on and, and build the road themselves? They have no authority in, in, in the state to do anything like that. And this is a billion dollar project. I mean, that well, money but if it makes, if it's going to pay for itself and it makes sense, uh, they could do it themselves. Um, no, it, 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 it's federal state. Um, they don't have the authority right, well, to do that. I stick by my <laughs> prior statement, which is before we talk about new sources of revenue, we need to get control over our out of control state budget on the spending side. And one of the things that happens, and this happens in businesses, and this is part of the reason I think my experience in turning around businesses is particularly uh, appropriate for what Connecticut faces right now. Because when companies get in trouble and they start running out of money, the only place they can cut back is where expenses are discretionary. Even households, have, you know, you can't, you can't cut off, not pay the heating bill. And you, you have to pay your mortgage if, if you can. So they're not considered discretionary. So you, you end up cutting back on other things. But in the in the in the case of businesses and and governments, uh, lots of times things that are considered discretionary are actually vital, like education. Um, vital to the future, and and we've got we have let our state get in a position that the people have been so res irresponsible up in the legislature on spending that they basically run us out of money. So the only only options we have right now are pulling back on everything that's discretionary, like the tourism budget, and so we're not able to invest in things that make sense for the future of the state. May even make sense economically in the sense that they pay for themselves. The tourism budget, everybody tells me that, that tourism, promotional dollars for tourism pay for themselves. That you actually get the revenues back, but you don't get them back for some period of time. Um, uh, so it's a good expenditure, but it's discretionary, so it gets cut back. And you know, your Route 11 project's the same way. It, it, it probably makes a lot of sense, but the legislature's run us off of, of, a, of a, a cliff uh, fiscally, and so we don't have the, the discretion to, to um, even take advantage of things that, are, that, are, that really make sense for the state. Uh, so we've been spending too much and investing too little. The way you, you, the way you get the ship turned around is you, you cut back the spending um, and, and get your economic house in order, and then you can start investing. Uh, and we're just going to kick this can down the road if we let our legislators think about, well, maybe maybe their sources of revenue. They always think of revenues don't impact anything uh, and don't cost anybody anything, and, and, and then they can keep going with the spending. But, uh, as we've learned nationally and here in Connecticut, a lot of that costs us jobs. And jobs hurt families. Loss of jobs hurt. There's nothing that hurts as much as loss of a job in terms of your sense of how you're doing and, and your future and what you're able to do for your children if you have children. So we need to reduce spending. Then we can talk about investing in things like Route 11. And if, 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 they, if it makes sense to find a new source of revenue to support that investment, I'd be willing to consider it then, but not until we've got it in our fiscal house. There are a lot of problems, and we could talk for hours. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> time is running up. All right. Uh, but I'm sure we'll learn more over these next four televised debates in the next yes. 30 days as well. Uh, Mr. Foley, thank you for joining us okay. again. Thanks, Ray. And, uh, Always a pleasure. And, and we will be back uh, next Tuesday with uh, Linda McMahon uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, here in, in the Norwich Bulletin. You have yourself a nice evening and weekend.